Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today my video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I've mentioned several times on my channel about my addiction to um, heroin and I wanted to today go like tell my complete story and the reason that I want to do this is because I have ho high hopes of maybe somebody seeing this and it changing their life. Um, fingers crossed that that does happen. So I'm going to go back to when I was a child all the way up until where I am now. Um, as a child, my parents were not together. My birth mom and birth dad, they were not together. Um, my mom and my dad split up when I was eight months old and I actually have a little brother who um, my mom was married to his dad for quite some time and he um, did some things to me that um, hurt me, like sexual things that hurt me as a child, um, very abusive sexually, mentally, and physically. And I had a lot of anger as a child due to those things and, you know, growing up, my mom was a very good mom. She did the best that she could. She went to college. She became a nurse. And about the age of, I would say, 10, 11-ish, um, my mom started getting into drugs, like, heavily. And um, she ended up falling out, which falling out means like passing out from too much drugs of whatever you were dispensing into your body or pretty, yeah, pretty much that. But, um, she fell out in the bathroom at her work and she was a nurse at a, um, home or a nursing home in, um, Ohio and she fell out and therefore ended up being found by an employee or a co-worker to her. But um, they ended up taking her to jail and I didn't speak to her for a very long time because of that. I was living with my grandmother and um, she ended up going to prison and did her prison sentence and got out. Well, eventually I ended up talking to her again. We, you know, me and my brother moved back in with her and uh, a little bit further down the line, I'm about 14 years old. Well, back up a little bit. I'm gonna go to when I was 13. I started dating a 30 year old man and fell in love and you know, couldn't live without him, blah de blah de blah Well, my mom found out about it, and she wanted to press charges, and I lied my way out of it because I thought I was in love, and um, the cops asked me if we were having, like, sexual intercourse, blah, blah, blah. I completely lied to him and told him no, that we had never touched one another, and we were just friends, and... My mom moved me away to a whole nother town and I ended up slicing my wrists, being put into a third floor mental hospital and did a 72 hour, 72 hour evaluation, mental evaluation, and then they let me out. Um, when I turned 18 years old, I, the day I turned 18, I looked this man up, and um, he was with another woman, and I called him. He immediately left her, came and picked me up, and we were together from that day forward until, pretty much until we split up, 
besides when he was in and out of jail or when I was in and out of jail or prison. So fast forward now, we're going to get into me being 18 years old. Well, let's just rewind a little bit. I'm going to go to 16, around 15, 16 years old. I am now with somebody else because you know, my mom made me move away from this 30, the 30 year old that I was with. And now I am with another man and he is, I am 16 or 17 and he's like 17 or 18. And, um, his dad gets prescribed Oxycontin 40 milligrams every, or three times a day. And he also gets Vicodin 5s, or, yeah, Vic 5s, which are both opiates, for those of, that are watching this that don't know that. Um, his son, which is the guy that I'm with, is like, Dad, you know, I can sell these for this amount of price, and, um, you know, I can give you this amount of money for this many, and his dad was all for it because he wasn't taking them. Well, the person that I was with was selling them, and we were not doing them. I was totally against drugs, blah, blah, blah. Well, we, like, started double dabbling, you know, being around addicts that are using, you're eventually going to go into that. If you are around somebody that is using, whether you've tried it or not, nine times out of ten, you're going to. So if you are around somebody that's using and you are not using, you've never been somebody that's used drugs, smoked weed, drank alcohol, get away from them. I'm speaking from experience and it's, it's never a good outcome. Well, um, we do start using those. I used pills for about a year and one day could not find any pills and we were, you know, friends with somebody that had heroin told us that it was heroin that it is pretty much the same thing as oxycontin and it will make you feel better it is an opiate and so is the pills so it is pretty much the same thing only one's illegal and one is prescribed to you by a doctor or you can buy them both off the streets so we um first off i was snorting it for about a year and then I started shooting it and when I first started shooting it I didn't need I didn't want um, to do it by myself so I had to have somebody do it for me and then eventually figured it out how to do it on my own felt comfortable enough to do it on my own so I did and I was off to the races Sorry about that my husband called anyways um, I forget what I was talking about I shot it and you know I was off to the races and like I said when I turned 18 years old I hit that um, the guy up the 30 year old that I was with and from that day forward him and I were together um, we used together we did everything together um, we one day I was I think no I was 19 yeah I was about 19 years old when I was charged with my first felony I was a breaking and entering um, we were he was getting um, scrap which is like copper steel things like that out of a dumpster that didn't have a lock on it or anything while well, the cops pulled up and they charged both of us with breaking and entering. I took mine to trial, and before it got to trial, they ended up dismissing it because um, lack of evidence, pretty much. There was no lock on it or anything. Um, my The 30-year-old, my boyfriend, was actually pled out to it, and he got probation. So he's on felony probation and I got my charges dismissed completely without prejudice. 
and um, we're both still using from the time he gets out of jail he's still using and you know a couple years pass he gets a um, probation violation he ends up going to a CBCF and um, this is about 2013 the very beginning of 2013 and um, my mom is just getting out of a halfway house and he is going into the halfway house fast forward to one month and two days after my mom is released from the halfway house um, the night before that me and her hang out for a few hours before she goes to work she gives me a big hug tells me she's sorry that she's been away and that she loves me so much gave me some cigarettes for my birthday because at that time I was still smoking cigarettes and she leaves and she goes to work well she's with a guy that is bragging about how he is wanted from Columbus Ohio for murder because he was putting stuff into people's heroin selling it to him to them and they were dying and um I don't know why at that moment I didn't think anything weird I didn't like there's so many what ifs that went through my mind after I got the phone call and had to go to my grandma's house for her to tell me that they found my mother dead my mom was 39 years old and she had a needle in her arm laid up against the, the wall of her house with still about 20 cc's of heroin still in the needle she didn't even get all of it in before she her heart exploded and she overdosed and died um, my little brother who at that time was only 16 years old is the one that found her and yeah um Sorry. That was probably one of the hardest parts of my life. I've never fully grieved it. I love my mom with all my heart and I still do. I actually have her tattooed on my arm. I don't know if you guys can see that real well this is her I love her so much I miss her so much my mom was my best friend but that's what I'm saying like this stuff does not discriminate it doesn't matter if you're a nurse it doesn't matter if you're a child if you're an adult if you're a grandma grandpa doctor lawyer whatever it will take your life or ruin it so now I am aggravated I'm mad at God I'm mad at the world I'm mad at everything and I go to my drug dealer and before that I have a man pick me up because I was prostituting at this time prostitution is where you have sex with people or you know there was times that I literally just went to dinner with them or hung out with them and they gave me money so I go and to my sugar daddy and I pick up some money, go pick up some heroin, some Xanax, and I'm just eating Xanax like it's candy and shooting as many bags as I can get in the water if sucked up into a syringe at this moment. And I pass out trying to kill myself. I, you know, fall out and I still wake up, you know, my boyfriend who's a 30 year old is calling me from the halfway house and he's trying to figure a way to get out because he knows that like I'm pretty much trying to kill myself I was there was no pretty much to it I was trying to kill myself I wanted to be with my mom I didn't care about anything else I just wanted to be with my mother and he ends up getting a medical discharge from this halfway house um, his probation officer at this point doesn't even know about it so uh, he comes home and honestly I do owe that to him I do 100% feel that he is one of the reasons why I am still alive today 
and the reason I say one of the one of the reasons is because I've had many overdoses after that and people saved my life and things you know things like that but um anyways let's fast forward a few years I come up with this bright idea one day when we're in a pawn shop that oh this place doesn't have cameras so let's go ahead and sidetrack the guy because it was a pawn shop plus a car lot so I sidetracked this guy into walking outside I use my 30 year old boyfriend's cousin have her dress up in some skimpy clothing and have her walk in and ask this guy about a car they walk out I walk in I grab five boxes with 36 rings in them a piece and I walk out the door she comes and meets me along with my boyfriend because my boyfriend's on the phone telling me where they are at all times. Well, you know, them friends that you think you can trust, just let me tell you, you cannot trust them. She ratted on me. She told me, told them everything plus things that weren't even needed to be put in. She put it all out there. Um, and I even gave her one of the biggest rings that was in there, gave her some cash, some dope, dope being heroin, and she went on her merry old way. Well, they didn't know that it was me because my hair was pulled up in a ball cap. Um, I had a whole bunch of layers of sweatpants and clothes and stuff on, so I looked like a really big man in the pictures of the camera um shots because I didn't see the cameras didn't know they were there and the only one that they had was the one on the outside so um then I you know all the jewelry is gone they never did find any I did end up getting put on felony probation and I get out of jail and I'm still using at this point and um not giving a crap about anything in the world and uh let's see here fast forward i was on probation for two and a half years going to mary haven which is an outpatient drug treatment facility and i'm always keeping pee ups inside of me and a little tiny plastic bottle and any i mean i passed drug tests for two and a half years and was never even clean not one minute of it so, um, eventually it ends up catching up to me and I get violated on my probation. Well, I go to Marysville, which is a prison in Ohio, and do my time, get out. My first night home, I was drinking. My second night, night home, I was doing Suboxone. My third night home, I was doing heroin. And, uh, not even two months later, I caught another two felony charges. One was promoting prostitution, and the second one was a possession charge. The detectives kicked in my door, and because I was, um, in a ring of women selling themselves online. And it was my home, so I got the promoting charge. Um... Then I go to prison. I got out on a judicial and um, I did very well for about um, a little over a year, about a year and a half, almost two years. And um, at this time I am with the man that I am with now. You know, I told the 30 year old, like, look, you're not changing your life around. I don't want this in my life no more. I don't want to be another statistic and die like my mom did. And, um, I ended up relapsing. I was working at a place called PGW and they make glass for cars. I was working 12 hour days, seven days a week. Um, Plus, you know, trying to keep up with my home life and everything else. And it just didn't work out. It was too overwhelming for me. 
and I ended up relapsing. I quit going to meetings. I quit going to church. I quit praying. I quit reading my Bible. I quit doing all of that. So, um, I ended up relapsing two months into my relapse, which my husband did not know about this. Didn't even know that I relapsed. Two months into my relapse, I find out I'm pregnant. I'm scared to death because I'm using. Um, I'm not even supposed to have children because at the age of 15 I was told I would never have children because I had an ectopic pregnancy and had my right, right fallopian tube removed during emergency surgery to save my life. Well, um, so I don't believe it. I'm taking test after test after test after test. I think I took like seven or eight tests in the amount of two days. So I go to a doctor's appointment and set up a confirmation, a pregnancy confirmation, and I'm pregnant, comes back positive. So, you know, being an addict strung out, I've always said, like, I cannot believe women use while they're pregnant. They're so disgusting. That's horrible. You're a piece of shit for doing that. And you know something? I will never say that I will or will not do something until I've lived in that moment. I used while I was pregnant all the way up until almost three months. I found out I was pregnant when I was five weeks. You don't know how you're going to react to something until you are in that moment. And I tried to get clean. It, I couldn't do it. I went up to Mary Haven, got Subutex, and it sent me into withdrawal so bad that I puked all over myself. Outside my car window, it flew back into my car. All over my husband. All over our car. I pooped my pants, literally. Um, I used, it didn't make me feel too much better. I couldn't even control my body. I was shaking so bad. And Subutex isn't supposed to be able to send you into withdrawals. And I was clean at that time. I was eating rottens for almost three days. It shouldn't have done that. I don't know why it did that. I don't know if it was because I was pregnant and it lasts longer in your system. I don't know. Still to this day, I do not know. I don't know how my son survived inside of me with me going through that because whatever you feel, that baby feels. When my pregnancy lasted past that, in the back of my mind I knew that it was going to completely go through unless I died in the process of all of this, getting clean, not getting clean, whatever. But I still worried. I still worried that I would lose him and it's because it was something I wanted so bad and I wasn't ever supposed to have it and it was happening right now at the worst moment of my life it was happening God was showing me like look you dummy you need to get your crap together you have so much more to live for not only do you have yourself you have your family and I am giving you a gift that you've been begging for since you were a little girl you wanted an amazing husband, boom, you got one. You want a child, boom, you got one. Stick by God's side and he will give you whatever he feels necessary for you to have when he feels it is necessary. Yeah, I prayed to God for years and years and years and it didn't come. But you know what? It didn't come in the way I wanted it. It came in the way God wanted it, with his will on his time. He will bless you with every anything that you need, but it'll be in your his time and in his way. And you may not see that, so you're not going to be a believer of God. You're not going to... That's a whole other conversation, a whole other thing. But anyway, so I ended up getting clean, and I was scared to tell Mary Haven that I was pregnant because I knew that they had a policy where if you're pregnant, you can't be in their program. So... I waited a little while, I did end up telling them, and they gave me, they referred me to Mansfield Third Street Clinic, 
and I went to the Third Street Clinic appointment and they told me here is some comfort medication we want you to withdraw until we can get you an appointment you have to be able to pass a drug test blah 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 and then we can get you in a, into an appointment and then you can get your subutex excuse me what did you just say no I'm not putting myself nor my child through this again sorry goodbye not doing your blood work I'm not no no absolutely not and they didn't know how long it was gonna be until I got into the doctor nope I ended up going to a like pay pay for the visit type doctor crap and your insurance pays it for you $160 I got 60 um, suboxone submutex because I was pregnant and I did that for a little while and then I got into the doctor that I am in am with now um, I also went to a place called the Beacon House in Worcester, Ohio. Um, that place is absolutely amazing. Um, I would recommend that to anybody. They have a woman's, uh, woman's house and a men's house. They have sober living. They will help you get a job. They will help you get a car. They will help you do whatever you wish to do. You need a GED? They, will, they got you. It is a live-in place. It's like a big old house. It literally is a house and you have a RN or whatever they're called there at all times. Um, you pray every time you eat. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I absolutely love that place. Um, I graduated from there in um, August. And in November, November 21st, I had my son. Um, emergency C-section. He was the most beautiful, healthiest little boy I've ever seen. And um, he withdrew a little bit, but not too bad. And he was only in the hospital a week after I was discharged. Or no. Yeah, it was... a week week and a half after I was discharged and we got to go home and I go to meetings I go to church I read my Bible every day I set time aside for God every morning I have a devotional I have I post those things on my Instagram on my Facebook um, I'm very active in my recovery I stay in recovery and I remind myself every day what got me here and every day how I can stay here and I get make sure I take my medicine of my meetings my church my subutex because I'm still on subutex um, your meetings are your is a form of medicine to me that's what helps me stay sober my um, Bible that's what helps me stay sober going to church helps me stay sober my son Looking at his smiling, handsome little face helps me stay sober. My husband helps me stay sober. My family helps me stay sober. Watching my little boy not want to go to pay people because he doesn't really remember them and wants me is a humongous push for me to stay sober. Because I know with being on felony probation right now, that if I go back to prison for another two and a half years, my son is going to be so lost and devastated. And I just, the thought of that makes my, makes me have chills. Like I, I cannot do that and I will not do that. I love my little boy. I was never supposed to have a little boy and I will be damned if I miss one second of his life not doing it let alone two and a half years not happening so you have to find yourself some type of higher power rather it be whatever it is you know a piece of grass um, God your boyfriend your ch children um, anything 
that is a power greater than yourself that makes you happy enough to stay sober for that reason and for yourself. You have to put yourself first above it all. And I hope that whoever watched this, that you watched it all the way to this point, and I hope that it helped you. I hope it gave you motivation to get clean if you are using, whether it be heroin, crack, whatever. I hope that you get clean because there is, I have never been happier in my life and I never thought I would be this way. I do have um, still a lot of work ahead of me. I have a counselor that I go see once a month um, and I could call her at any time. I have a sponsor. Um, me personally, I don't really use the sponsor like I should or like they say I should. My husband is pretty much my sponsor. I know it's not supposed to be the opposite sex, but it is. And he's my best friend. I'm there for him. He's there for me. We talk each other or talk to each other about everything. And I that's who I use. That's my go-to. If I have a bad day, I tell him about it when he gets home from work. But I hope that this helped you guys, girls children, whoever, please get help. Please don't be another statistic. Please do not. I've buried so many friends. So many friends of mine have died. So much family members have died. It's either you're in jail, you're in prison, or you're six foot under. Make your pick. Or you could be sober. Enjoy everything. Be able to feel things again. Like, it's probably the best. It is the best thing ever in this world honestly but um I am gonna go ahead and end this video because my son should be waking up from his nap and I love each and every one of you guys I want to thank you guys for being here with me at all times I love you and I want you guys to have a wonderful night please get clean and sober if you are using if you're not continue your great work love you guys bye